that said, I want to go ahead and introduce Mr. Reginald Morris. That's P1. That's the right? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. That's P1, Mr. Reginald Morris. Simon says right hand up. Simon says left hand under your chin. Simon says wiggle your fingers. Simon says look around. Thank you. Put your hands down, everybody. Thank you very much. You just want to bet. I told my son that Simon says is the international signal to get someone's attention. And now that I have your attention, do me a favor and close your eyes. And now we're not in Toastmasters anymore. We're in a race car. Go ahead, reach out and grab the steering wheel if you can, and grip it tight. Tight like you're the best race car driver in the world. Go ahead and start your engine. What are we, hybrid in here? Let me hear some engines. Vroom, 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 vroom. And now we're driving. And we're off around the first corner, missed all the traffic, before you know it, you're now in the lead. You're so far in the lead that your second place competitor isn't even in your rear view mirror. And you look up and there's only five laps to go. Five laps until you're in the history books, until you're the holder of the most world records for Formula One racing championship. And then, bang! Open your eyes, let go of the steering wheel come on back. Greetings, contest master, judges, friends. That's P1. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you do when life throws something at you that takes you from P1 to the back of the pack? I absolutely adore Formula One racing. It's a new love for me, and it's a love that's spreading around my house. There are so many family moments that I can think of surrounding around Formula One racing. To give you an example, in the summertime, the Formula One calendar takes a swing through Europe. Because of the time difference, that means those races start very early in the United States. So on Sunday morning, I'll wake up and I'll peek into my daughter's room because I know my baby girl's awake. And we'll tiptoe down the stairs and sit on the couch and I'll warm her milk up and we'll watch racing. And many times, Sunday is hair day, and so I'll start taking her hair out, and by the time the checkered flag waves, she's got this beautiful afro. We call it Big Hair Sundays. But what's important about that is, that's the little girl that I'll remember when I'm walking her down the aisle. Formula One helped me create that memory. I'll never be a Formula One race car driver. I am allergic to danger. <laughs> Anytime I see a cat crash, I start to itch. But I've realized there are so many parts of that race that I can apply in my everyday life. Here's one. The drivers don't really matter. You see, the drivers in Formula One, they're talented because there's only 20 seats on that grid. This is a global sport, so only 20 people can fit into the race car. All of us here are drivers as well, though. You're racing every single day trying to accomplish something, trying to get across that finish line. But you know there's more than just you trying to reach those goals. In the same way that a driver replies, replies on an engineer, on a mechanic, on a physical therapist, and a host of other people. So remember, even though you may be driving, there are other people that are helping you finish that race. One of my favorite parts of the race weekend is on Monday after the checkered flag has raced, uh, has been waved. And I say that because you get to hear the radio replay. It's crazy things that are happening all throughout the race. But what you'll realize is the teams whose communication is clear are usually the ones finishing on the podium. Just last night, I was sitting with my daughter and my wife was busy doing something and my son was in the shower. I walked in and I said, Reggie, 
holler when you're finished in the shower and I'll come and get you out. About five minutes later, I'm reading the story to my daughter and I hear, I said, what is going on? And I went down to the bathroom and I looked at him and he said, well, you told me to holler. <laughs> we have to be clear with our communication. One of the most important people on the Formula One team is the team principal. That's the boss. This is the person that's re responsible for the strategy, the personnel, the racing decisions. The buck stops with him or her. We all are team principals in our lives as well. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. But that's okay, because if your team behind you is strong, you'll be able to lead folks in the right direction. But you know my favorite part of the Formula One race? It's the pit stop. It is the most chaotic and organized five seconds of the entire race. But what I love about it the most is the message that it sends. Sometimes we have to change strategy. Sometimes we got to pop off the old tires and put on some new tires. Don't be afraid to pull over, take a break, and make the repairs you need to take you where you need to go. Hop back in your race car for me because we stopped on lap five. This is a true story, and the story is about Lewis Hamilton, seven time world champion. On lap five, there was a crash. And by the time that crash was cleaned up and the caution car was out of the way, there was only one lap left. Lewis was in first place and his arch rival Max Verstappen was in second place. But because of a new rule, Max was allowed to cut in front of everyone and get directly behind Lewis. And at that point, he had fresh tires. And so it was only a matter of time before he passed Lewis. But you know what Lewis Hamilton did? He didn't sulk, he didn't complain, he congratulated, Max spent the all season getting better and was back on the line to start the next season. Friends, everything is not going to go our way. And sometimes we need to be gracious in defeat and look for lessons and then get back up and get ready to start again. You can't be P1 if you're not on the racing line. That's the Toastmaster.
Well, good reason this time, because as I looked to the left, I saw the chrome bumper of a big pickup truck coming my way. And despite my best efforts, I stepped on the gas, got that four cylinder engine going, I didn't make it. Next thing I know, I heard a big crash and my minivan spun around and I was looking backwards at the bumper of this guy as he came to a stop. He hopped out of his truck, got down to his bumper, looked at it, rubbed it, looked at me, USA baby, got back into his truck, turned the ignition, split, wouldn't start. Then he comes back up to me, says, boss, got a pair of jumper cables I can borrow. No, I don't have jumper cables. What do I look like? So he goes back to his truck and starts trying to figure out how to get it working. Meanwhile, his cop car pulls up behind me, turns on the flashing lights. The cop's obviously too lazy to get out of the car. Instead, he picks the PA and says, please remove your vehicle from the right of way. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna go anywhere. So I just sit there and about 30 seconds pass by, he goes on to PA again and says, this is Officer Selensky of the Fairfax County Police Department. Remove your vehicle now. What am I gonna do? Next thing I know, I see him get out of the car, releases the uh, little half thing on his holster to hold it so he gets the gun out quick. Comes up to the window on the passenger side. Says, look pal, we can either do this the easy way or the hard way. And then while staring at me, he spits out the side of his mouth and hits an ant on the ground. He says, I ask you to move your car. And I said, officer, I can't. He says, you mean you can't or you won't move your car? I said, no, no, I can't, I was in an accident. And he says, the car looks good to me. And I said, no, go around the other side and you'll see a big crease in my car, my wheels all bent up. So he does that cop walk, he goes to the other side, looks at it, says, hey, you've been in an accident. You can't move. <laughs> well, it's nice to know our tax dollars weren't wasted sending this guy to the police academy. So he gets my story and he says, okay, so what happened? I said, well, I got over there, Billy, in the pickup truck. I went through on the green light. He ran the red light, hit me and spun me around. Now he's over there trying to get his car started again. So he takes the information, then he walks over to the guy in the pickup truck, Billy, we'll call him, and says, all right, can you well uh, please describe what happened? And Billy goes on and says, well, officer, I was driving along and I dropped the cassette tape on the floor and I didn't want it to fall through the rust holes in the truck, so I reached down to grab it. And when I wasn't looking, the light turned red. So the accident's your fault. It ain't my fault. That light turned when I wasn't looking. Have you been drinking? You bet I have. I just won the beer drinking contest at the state fair. I drank a whole 12 pack in under 30 minutes. <laughs> You're not honestly proud of that. The cop says, can I see your license and registration? Ain't got it. Why not? Someone stole it. The judge stole it from me. What do you mean the judge stole it? Yeah, he said I was drinking and driving, so he took my license. He ain't no doctor. He can't, he can't tell me whether I'm drunk or not. I am a trained professional, he says. Officer Selinski sees what's going on, so he brings Billy into the squad car, puts him down in the back seat by himself. Meanwhile, he uh, comes to me, he gets a tow truck and getting everything squared away. And I'm over there looking at Billy in the back of Officer Selinski's car. And Billy's starting to go like, you know, moving around like that. And I just realized Billy just drank a 12 pack of beer. <laughs> that beer's gotta go somewhere. And there's two options. Let's just say when Officer Selinski went back to his car, he rolled the windows down and was going like that. Now, I remember I was telling you why this is the luckiest day of my life. And my luck changed. Because when I got home, I was hanging around 
kind of waiting around, just watching TV, you know, thinking about what happened during the day. Oh, excuse me. Hello? It's Jake from State Farm. How about that? <laughs> Jake just heard that one of his insured, while driving intoxicated, ran a red light and is in jail and damaged my car and wanted to know how much I needed. And that, my friends, is why it's the luckiest day of my life because the car I had was a pile of junk. I was trying to figure out how to get rid of it. And between Billy and my buddy Jake from State Farm, I just got a new car. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Judges, when you are completed, just hold your ballot in the air so I can grab it.